welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we have a debut on the channel by the constructor Innocuous. It's a dangerous name for a, a constructor, I think. Innocuous makes it sound like this puzzle will be easy. Apparently this is approachable, but not easy. Uh, it's called Flywheel, and it's got this sort of pattern in the grid. Uh, looks a bit like a flywheel made up of lines. And the testers say this is a beautiful puzzle, so we should be in for a treat as usual. Now, if you haven't had your treat from Saturday night, do have a look at the video we released at uh, 8 o'clock on Saturday, which was a puzzle by Philip Newman that is making waves throughout, well, the puzzle world, frankly. It is a killer Sudoku with only 18 cells covered by cages. That's it. It's quite, quite stunning. It will. It, it is a puzzle that will go down in the ages. And um, yeah, it, it's also not too difficult. So do have a look at that because I think you will you'll find your mind is blown. Incredible stuff. Um, and what else do I want to mention? Um, well, just all the stuff we've got going on on Patreon at the moment. There is a whole plethora of magnificent puzzles, 20 of which were created by Jovial for the Sudoku Extravaganza. And I actually did one of Jovial's puzzles yesterday on the channel as well which was a lovely thermo sudoku so yeah check out the, the puzzle pack by jovial i think seven or eight hundred of you have done that and solved all 20 which is quite amazing um and of course we've also got the murder mystery sudoku hunt which i know so many of you have been enjoying with good reason because that is it's a real story accompanied by sudoku there's a crime you have to find out who committed it what more could you ask for it's great uh, so have a look at that too anything else to mention no let's read read the rules a flywheel they are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. All lines in the grid are Renban. Ah, okay. I.e. they must each contain a set of consecutive non-repeating digits in any order. So if you've not come across Renban before, let's look at this line here. What we've got to do is make sure this line um, hasn't... Has, <laughs> well, as the instructions say, it must contain a consecutive non-repeating set of digits. So let's imagine we found out this square was a 1. The moment this square was a 1, we would know the contents of this line. It would have to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and we, but we wouldn't know the order. It's not like a thermo where the numbers have to increase in a particular order from the bulb or anything. Literally, we could put the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in any order on this Renban line. So that's how Renban lines work. Um, cells containing an opaque grey square must contain an even digit. So it looks like we've got six even cells there. And digits in circles must appear in at least one of the cells touched by the circle. So it's quadruple rules today. So that means those four squares there have to contain a five and a six. And in fact, you couldn't put more than one five or more than one six into any of these quadruple cells because they would break the rules of Sudoku. So don't do that. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, my normal tactic for quadruples clues is to look for uh, digits that align. So you can see we've got a 2, 3 and that 2 by 2 and a 2, 3 and that 2 by 2. So the moment we see this, we should be asking where the 2 and the 3 go in column 3, because we can immediately rule them out of all of those six squares. So we now know there's a 2 and a 3 on a Renban line down here. Oh, in fact, I'm just seeing... ah. Before I look at this, and I will look at this, let's have a look, actually, if we look all around the grid, we've got four fives there forced onto that Renban line, seven eights here forced onto that Renban line, and five sixes here forced onto that Renban line. So that all of the quadruple cells do align with one other quadruple cell. And now we've got loads of digits on Renban lines. Let's look at this one first. So this is a five cell Renban line that definitely contains a two and a three, which means it also, this is very clever. So this means it also contains a four and a five because whether, whether we go up or down, so whether we decide that this is a one, two, three, four, five, quintuple or a two three four five six quintuple there's always a four and a five on this line well the four and the five can't go in those squares because of this quadruple clue so this is a four five pair which means oh i see and that means that's a four five pair and that means this square is even and that's a four and we get our first digit in the grid which is rather lovely 
Although we still don't know this Remban line's composition, do we? It's I we don't know whether there's a a one two three or a two three six. I'm not sure whether I should be pencil marking. Oh no, I can't do anything with this. Tempting as it may seem. Um, okay, I'm not sure if I can do any more down here. Let's have a look at the other Remban lines. So this Remban line, ooh, fours and fives are not as useful normally. Uh, yeah, I don't think I know anything about this really, do I? Um, because it can go downwards. If it goes downwards, this could be a one, two, three, four, five. Uh, quintuple on the Remban line, or it could go upwards and be four, five, six, seven, eight. It probably is four, five, six, seven, eight. That would interfere with these squares, but I don't think we know. Bobbins, right? Let's look at this one. We've got seven R. Ah, so this is better because seven and eight, of course, are closer to an extreme. So what? Oh, this is the same as this. So this this time. Which digits? Oh, Maverick's flying past. It must mean that we've, we're onto a good puzzle today. Um, so, this line, what, what digits has it definitely got on it if it's got an 8 and a 7 on it? Well, we know it's a 5 cell Remban line. So, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, or 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Either way, it's got a 5 and a 6 on it. And those that 5 and 6 must go in this domino because they can't go in those three squares because of the quadruple. So this is a 5-6, that's a 5-6, that gets, it's the same logic on this side. In fact, it really is symmetric. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. that's interesting straight away. I wonder how symmetrical this grid is. Always be on the alert for something like this. Look, there's a 6 and a 4 in symmetrically disposed positions. If you were to rotate the grid around 180 degrees, literally just twist it like this, this square would map to this square. And look, those both add up to 10. This square would map to this square. They both add up to 10. So we might have a lot of symmetry in this grid. Um, and the, the way I, I was thinking about that is that the logic was so similar. The logic down here was identical to the logic up here. Having said which, oh, I haven't looked at this. Oh, this rem, yeah, this rem line is the same as this one. You don't know. You don't know whether it goes up or down. So, what on earth do we do next? I don't know about this rem band. I don't know about this rem band. I know quite a bit about these ones, but not. I haven't perfected them. I could pencil mark these squares in. Let's do that. So this is either seven, eight, and nine. Or it's seven, eight, and four. Um, I know this even cell is not a six. That's two, four, or eight. So the same logic probably applies there. Yeah, this is not a four. So this is two, six, or eight. Maybe I've got to use the long Renban lines. Although I don't know, although five. Ah, five. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Okay, so if we look at the, the digit that appears most often in the grid at this point, it is the digit five, because we've actually got five in four of these. Now, five can't go in these two squares. It can't go here because of the five, six quadruple, and it's the same on the other side of the grid, exactly analogous logic. So five is in one of those squares, which means that's not five. So we get in more digits. We get a six and a five here, and a four and a five here. Again, symmetrically disposed digits still adding up to 10. What on earth does that mean? <laughs> um. Not sure. I feel like this must be important somehow, though. How is that important? This six is now seeing a lot of cells in this column on the grey Remban. Ah, yeah, okay. 
Here we go. So where does 6 go on the grey Renban line? It's not in those two squares because of the 5, 6 we've got pencil mark there. It's not here for the same reason. We could either use the 6 here or the 6 here. And it's not in those three squares because of this 6. So it's in one of those three squares. Let's highlight those and take a stare at those. Oh, that's quite beautiful. That is quite beautiful as an idea. Now, look at this 6. And in particular, look at this 6 in the context of this Renban line. Because now you can't put... Whether the 6 is in the, the, this orange square or in these orange squares, it sees all three of those squares. By Sudoku, if it's here, obviously you can't put 6 again there. If, it's, if there's a 6 there, you can't put 6 here. This 6 rules out those two squares. So you can't put 6 on this Renban. And if you can't put 6 on this Renban, it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 quintuple. And what I'm looking forward to doing is to see whether I can do exactly that trick with 4 over there somewhere. But let's see what this does. Um, so 4 and 5 are in those squares, so they are not here. Uh, hmm. What does that do? <laughs> um, ah, okay. Yeah, this is interesting again. Now we get an overlap. Oh, this is very, very strange, but bear with me here. These two squares are selected from 1, 2 and 3. And you can see, if you look at this box, this domino, I'll make these blue, has to go in exactly these two positions because everything else is pencil marked to not be a one, two or a three. Now we ask where blue goes in this box. And you might think blue could go here, but it can't because then it would repeat on its own Renban line. So blue is definitely not there, which means blue overlaps with orange at the bottom of the grid so now this uh, this is weird so these three squares are an orange is a six isn't it so these are these are one two three and six as the options for these squares and we know that we know th no hang on that means this is the six doesn't it of course because that means these two have to be blue yeah, okay, I see. So as these two have to be blue, they can't be six. And therefore the six goes there, which is, that is really strange and very, very beautiful. Now, what does that mean? I still want to go and look over there to see if the four does this sort of thing as well. I've got a one, and now I've got a one, two, three, four, five quintuple in box nine. So this square has to be a 6 or an 8. Because that's even. I've got to put a... Se well, I've got to put a 7 in there. That's not telling me anything I didn't know. Oh, I see. It is. Because now this 7, 8 gets fixed. That's got to be a 7, 8 pair. So this has got to be a 7, 8 pair. So this is a 6. Good grief. And that square's a 9. And that means that square's not a 6. Oh, I've got to be careful here, though, because I don't know whether this Renban line is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I don't know that this is a 6 or whether this is a 6 or not. 5 can't go in that square. That is something I do positively know. These squares have got to be a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple. And those two cannot be 4 because they are one, twos and threes. Ah, so four is still locked into two places. It's still not quite good enough. Um, now, what does this mean? The answer is, I'm, I'm not sure. The answer is I'm not sure, but what we can do now is we can think about this same logic with this digit. Now, I've now got to remember whatever the logic was I did with the six. It was the six and the grey line at the top, wasn't it? 
Oh, I see. So sort of by filling in some of the six logic down here, I've actually made this easier to see for the four, because now you obviously can't put four in any of those three squares. I can't put four in those squares. So four is in one of these three squares at the top of the, on the top gray palindrome, not palindrome, Renban line. Um, and that means that we've got to put, uh, now it's this line, isn't it? You now can't put a four, look, this four here is working the same magic this six was. You can't put four on this line anywhere. So if it can't have four in it, we now know the contents of this line. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine. By the way, I don't think I said it, but hopefully it's pretty obvious that both of these lines are nine cells long. So they have to each have, they, we've got to put one of every digit on the Remban lines because you can't repeat a digit. So that's why I'm trying to put digits on this Renban line. Um, now you can't put five and six here. So this becomes seven, eight, nine. That becomes two, three. It's absolutely analogous to what we did over there. That becomes two, three. Now, somehow last time I got this digit. So I'm expecting this to be a four by symmetry. Um, I can see it's not two and it's not six. So I can see it's four or eight. I have no idea how I eliminated. How, how did I eliminate whatever it was I eliminated down here? Was it a two? I don't know. Oh, it's probably because I've not done the cleverness involving this pair, is it? So let's look at that pair. Let's make that red. And think about where these red cells go in box seven. And the answer is in those two squares. And that means because we can't repeat red on their Remban line, we have to put red in those two squares, which means these two squares cannot be green anymore, which means this square is green and the green, of course, is four. Maybe I should make that clearer. Um, so that means that square is a four, which means that square is not a four. These squares are seven. Oh, I see why now. It's because these squares are a seven, eight, nine, and they form five, six, seven, eight, nine quintuple in box one, which makes this square a four, which means this square is not a four. And four in this box is in one of those two positions. And this square has to be a one. And that means that square is not a one. I've got a two, three pair in the top row. I don't remember getting a pair in the bottom row. Oh, I see, but I could have got one. I could have got one if I'd been more diligent about my pen. Well, actually, no, because I hadn't done that pencil marking at that point. So, but if you force that to be seven, eight, nine, now this square, look, can't be nine anymore. Once that square can't be nine, I've now got a seven, eight pair in the bottom row, opposite a two, three pair in the top row. Um, which means which means, oh, I see. And now this even square has no option. Well, it's got one option, I mean. It's not eight, it's not four, it's not six. So this is a two, which means that's not a two. That's not a two. This square is a one. This is a one or a six because it can't be a three because of the column. And now let's come back to the top row. Can we get this digit then? Again, just it's a bit like when you do a puzzle using girth symmetrical placement. We should just be able to keep inverting the logic and keep going because the puzzle has so much symmetry. Um, so actually, let me think about this. We've got to place, yeah, this square can't be four or six or two. This is an eight, which means that's not an eight. That's not an eight or seven and nine to place. This is a four, seven or a nine. It's not a seven. So this is a four or a nine and it's probably opposite a one or a six. And it is, look. Oh, now I've got a four, seven, eight, nine quadruple in this spot. This is so strange because I didn't notice I had a one, two, three, six quadruple in box seven until I realized I had a, the similar quadruple in box three. So that square has got to be a, oh, that, that square has got to be a one, two or a three. And that's giving me a one, two, three, triple in column nine. And presumably this square is a seven, eight or a nine. And that gives me a quadruple, sorry, a triple 
I think I said quadruple, a triple in column one. Now that can't be a seven, eight or a nine. Let's do the same down here. This can't be a one, two or a three. Um, now, have we run out of road with this, with this idea? The answer might be yes. Um, so what's the missing digit here? We've got a one, two, three, triple and a six, seven, eight. So this square is a four, a five or a nine. And I think it might be okay for it to be any of those things. And so what we're expecting, I'm not going to look at this side of the grid. I'm just going to look at this square. I'm expecting the options for this square down here to be one, six or five. Now, let's see. Um, so we've got two, three, four, seven, eight, nine. Oh, did I say? I can't remember what I said, but it's one, five and six. Is that what I said? I hope it is. I thought I said two. But anyway, it's one, five and six here. I'll look on the video later and see whether I've made myself look like a prized Charlie. Um, okay, what does all that mean then? Do I, oh, do I know what these, no, I don't. I was wondering whether, oh, no. So I was wondering whether we could resolve blues, given that we've basically limited the options. Can I? seem to have a lot of pencil marks as well which is never playing to my strengths such as they are some of you probably mumbling that i don't have many strengths <laughs> meanies uh, there's a four in one of those squares and a six in one of those squares so everything when i got that four i was immediately looking for the six um maybe i can do more with the lines then what have we done with the lines we've got hmm, don't know. I've not got any digits at all on the purple line. I'm not actually sure why the purple. Oh, I suppose the purple line is probably a different color from all the other lines, just to make it clear how it moves in the middle, is it? So we knew it didn't sort of go up here and then turn downwards or something. Oh, I see. That's probably what it is. So what can we do with the purple line? Anything at all? The answer is... Ah, yes, now I can do something with it. Oh, yes, I really can. That square. Where does that square go on the purple line? That is a good question. It can't go there by Sudoku. It can't go there. It's in the same box as this one. So this one can't go in those three. It's definitely not in those three. They're in the same row. And it's definitely not. A 7, 8, 9 is not the same digit as a 1, 2, 3 or 4 or a 1, 2 or a 3. So those two digits are the same which means, oh, this is beautiful. Good grief. Now this square, if it's the same as this square, is a seven, eight or a nine. And that gives me a triple in column seven, which forces that square to be a four, which makes that one a nine. And Oh yeah, okay, so there's no nine there. So in fact, what that means is we know the composition of this Remband line now. It's four, five, six, seven, eight. And if that's seven, eight, then that becomes nine. And then, then once you know nine is yellow, you come back over here and make that a nine. Now we know there's a nine in one of these three squares. Can have we put nine in gray yet? No. Um, wow, okay, and maybe that's as far as we can, oh no, it's not as far as we can take the logic, this 9 sees that square, so that's a 7, oh, this is, right, so now we know the contents of red, red includes a 7 and a 9, so we have to make this a 9 in order to the, for the Sudoku to work, and we have to make that a 7, one of these is a seven, one of them's a nine. Well, the bottom one can't be a nine. So that's a seven, that's a nine. That's an eight by Sudoku. This is a seven, this is an eight. Good grief. 
And I, yeah, and I, and I am aware that presumably I can do the same trick with this one in a moment. Let's just check. Have we used up as much logic as we're going to get from the red cells? Um, the answer is probably, but I'm not certain. The seven and the nine here mean those squares are not seven and nine anymore. So these are five, six, and eight, which means that squares are seven. No, we've still got more to go. And do we know what this Ren band line is yet? The answer to that is no. But maybe. Ah, I'm getting confused. I'm getting confused as to which which is the red logic and which might become the logic over here in a moment. This this row is a little bit interesting, isn't it? We need ones, twos, threes, fours. No, we need ones, twos, threes, and nines for these squares here, one, two, three, and nine. That's not a two. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I can go further. I probably can if I'm looking in exactly the right place, but I'm not seeing how to do it. So probably I need to, oh, what about that square? That can't be a five. So this column needs a six and an eight. Oh, this is gorgeous. Good grief. This column needs a six and an eight. Uh, but this is on the purple line where it's already got an eight on it. So that's a six. That's disambiguating that. Um, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep looking at this. So this is now a six. Let's check. The oh, look at the six. Oh, this is beautiful. So. I had pencil marked a six into one of those three squares. I just eliminated this one by Sudoku, but I should have eliminated this one by Renban. Can't repeat a six on the Renban line. So we get the six, which gets a six here, which doesn't seem to do anything. I probably could have got that six some other way. Um, and this square has to be a one, two, three, or a five. So four is now in one of those two squares, which means it's not here. In fact, what we're expecting, I suppose, is that the four is going to be there, aren't we? Uh, because of the amount of symmetry. Right, I think I am going to have a look at this square now. So let's remind ourselves of the logic we did this way round. If this, well, we have to ask where this goes on the purple line, it's not there. It's not there, it's not there, and it's not in any of those three, and it's not a six or an eight, so it goes here. So this becomes a one, two, or a three. Let's make sure we remember it's the same as that one. I'll use, I'm running out of colors, to be honest. Um, I'll use gray just for, just for a moment. Um, now I've got a one, two, three triple here, which settles this square as a six, which settles this square as a one, and this square is a three. And this square is a something. I don't know what. Uh, those squares are a two, three pair. So this square, the gray one becomes a one. That therefore becomes a one. Now my blue squares, you can see, are definitely three and one. So that becomes a one, that becomes a three. That's a three, that's a one. This, square's an, oh, this square is a two, which means we can't repeat two on the, on the Renban line. So, oh, okay, so where does two go now in this box? I think it can only go there, which means two goes here. <laughs> this is just insane. Um, so that becomes a four or five pair. This two gives me a two over here and a three here. This becomes a one nine pair. These squares are now known to be three, seven, and oh no. No, it's not a one nine pair, is it? There's a nine here. Don't be so hasty. That's a one seven pair. Now these squares are of course a three eight nine pair. How could anybody have thought anything different? That's not eight. Now what magic has all of this worked? Has this given me, oh, it's given me that digit. That's just a four because the one and the three are there. That's just a five, that's a five, that's a four. And that's strange because now I've got more digits on the right hand side than I've got on the left hand side. So I must have missed some logic on the left on the left hand side. And I have this six is giving me that and that and that'll give me that. And now, oh, no, it's still not the same, is it? 
I should be able to get a sort of a U shape here. These two digits should be doable. Uh, fours and eights. Yes, they are. <laughs> That's a four. And this is an eight. And now this digit should be doable. And it is because of this four, it sees a four on the Remban line, which makes this a four. Those squares can't be one. That square can't be a two. So this is a three, nine pair. And those two, three squares are one, two, and seven. Let's try and not mess that up this time. So this is a two, this is a three. Now, have we learned enough to finish the puzzle? The answer is, I don't know yet. I feel like we must be very close though to figuring this out. So what digits have we got to place on this Renban line still? We have got to put a three on it, a five on it, and a seven on it, which means those three squares are a three, five, seven triple. And well, we, we worked out right at the start, there was a five in one of those three squares. So we can now place the five in the grid, unsurprisingly in the central square. And why do I say unsurprisingly? Well, it's because the fives have been mapping onto each other. Now, if you think about what that means, if a five is mapping onto each other in other places in the grid, it, mu it must map an even number of times. So the only square that doesn't have a symmetrical counterpart is the central square, which is going to have to have the ninth value or the ninth digit of the one that wasn't symmetrically disposed to itself, which is a very long and complicated way of saying something that's probably fairly straightforward for most of you. So apologies if I am uh, preaching to the converted there. Now, what about this line then? What have we got on that? We have not got a two, we've not got a five, we've not got an eight. Well, that's the five. So this is a two eight pair, which we can do. Two and eight go in, that places the nine. That places a three here, I think. Um, oh, I don't like that. Oh, this three is giving me the three and the seven. That's giving me the seven and the one. One seven makes this a two. Seven makes this seven and this one. I think we've done it. This square is a one by Sudoku. This is a two, three pair. This is a seven. This is an eight. This is a three. This is a nine. So this is an eight, nine pair. And that is, I think, the correct solution. Wow, that was very, very clever. Very, I mean, what a brilliant debut on the channel by Innocuous. Um, there, there is a lot of very nice logic in this. It started off fairly gently with the twos and the threes finding homes on Renban lines and something found a home presumably therefore up there. And I can't remember what I then did. Um, no, I really can't. I think I got the five here. Oh yes, that's right. And we got the six and the four, didn't we? And then we realized that this gray Renban line needed a six and needed a four. And the, yes, this was lovely. And the fact that there was a six in an orange square and a six up here, locking a six off this Renban line is quite beautiful. It really was. And then every stage from there was just, it was very good fun to sort of do the logic in one part of the grid and then rotate it and do it in the other half of the grid. Um, so I enjoyed that mightily. And as you can see, we have a totally symmetrical solution. Ones and nines will be opposite each other in symmetrical counterparts, just 180 degree symmetry. Very nice indeed. Let me know in the comments how you got on. Let me know if you enjoyed it. I'm sure you did. And we'll be back, of course, later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.